Well, hello guys and welcome to Mr. Web Reviews and today we're going to review a plugin from the YI Themes company and this plugin will allow you to accept deposit and down payments on your WooCommerce website and this is a very powerful marketing tool indeed because it will allow your customers to secure a sale without having to pay the full amount up front. So very exciting indeed. So let's wait no further and let's have a look at this plugin. Okay guys, so today we're going to review the Yeath WooCommerce Deposits and Down Payments. So what the plugin does, but basically it allows your customers to split an order payment or leave a deposit and pay the balance at a later time. So uh, from our picture here, uh, you could be renting apartments by the week. Uh, it's $300 per week. And your customers could actually pay a deposit, a 100 upfront and pay uh, the 200 remaining at a later time. So either on site, uh, or cash or even online, as I'm going to show you now. So the cost of this uh, plugin is 119 euro and 99 cent. So it's a bit pricey, to be honest, but uh, if you look at the reviews here, uh, almost 9,000 customers bought this and with a rating of 4.4 out of 5, which is uh, which equals to 97% of customer satisfaction. So it's very good indeed. So let's see here our main benefits. Uh, you will sell products and services for which it's better to request a deposit, such as the rent of a room or an event or maybe some uh, high fashion piece of clothing. And it will allow to loyalize your customers by allowing them to pay only a part of the product beforehand, enhancing trust and re reliability. So it's a very uh, nice and strategic piece of marketing indeed, uh, which will allow you to increase sales and uh, secure uh, sales as well, you know. So let's go ahead and see all the features uh, from the WordPress dashboard. So the first settings we have here is, do you want to enable the plugin features? Yes or no? So you can select and enable deposit. So check this option to enable deposit for all products. So this behavior can be overridden in the product page. So you can either enable it or disable it, whichever way you want. If it's enabled, it will apply to all your products across uh, the board on your whole platform. Now, if you just want to uh, have a certain amount of products, just a few products, then let me show you in the product section. I'm going to leave this for now. And I'm just going to take this one here, hiking shoes. And if you scroll down, you can see we have a tab here called deposit. And if you click on this, all the settings will be by default, meaning that if your settings, you've enabled it, it'll be enabled here as well. Otherwise, if it's disabled, it'll be disabled here as well. But again, you can change all these settings manually for each and every product. So do you want to enable deposit on this one? Let's say yes. Uh, deposit checked, maybe yes as well. And then do you want to accept or force deposit? So it's either you allow deposit so they can pay the full amount or pay a deposit or you want to force deposit. So they'll have to pay a deposit. Uh, it'd be mandatory basically. And then let the user pay the balance order orders online so you want them to be able to pay the the, the outstanding amount online or do you want them to uh, pay through uh, different means uh, it could be uh, in cash when they get there or via wire transfer or maybe by check uh, via post or whichever way so if we save this now just save and we're going to preview our product so these are hiking shoes and as you can see uh, this action will let you pay a deposit of 1050 for this product so basically this is uh, based on our settings let's go back to our settings here you can see we have a false deposit now if we allow deposit let me show you the difference so let's refresh now now you can either pay the full amount or pay a deposit so uh, this gives your customers the choice so let's say if it's a sofa here uh, you you selling uh, furniture you have a piece of uh, furniture here it could be a table maybe with chairs of five hundred dollars and then it's on sale it's only one 
one available. There's only one available. So uh, the first one to snatch it uh, will secure the sale, basically. And you could give the option here, pay the full amount, $500, or pay a deposit, um, even $125 or $200. And if the person is happy enough to go ahead with this, they can add to cart. And this is how you secure the sale, basically. So let's go back to our settings again. So yes, payments. And there you go. And then the rest of our options are whether the deposit option should be selected by default or not. So when you land on this page, will this be ticked or will this one be ticked? You know, if it's this one checked, it by default is pay a deposit rather than pay the full amount. And false deposit is like we showed, you know, when you get on display page, you don't have the choice among those two. It's immediately pay a deposit. And then what do we have here? Deposit type. So what type of deposit uh, do you want to allow? Is it a person value of the product price or a fixed amount? So if it's a person value of the product price, you could say that uh, to secure the sale, we need a minimum of 20% of the amount. So if it's a five, uh, 500, then it's $100. If it's a fixed amount, you can say it was initially 500, that's the price, and we need $175 deposit. So it's really up to you, uh, whichever uh, way you want to set it up. And then we have a balance type here. So if someone pays a deposit, let's say 100 out of 500, what do you want to do with the remaining amount? Do you want to create one balance order for each item purchased with deposit? in which case you'll have 400 remaining out of the 500, it will create a new order just for that, or create a single balance order for all items purchased with deposits, so it, it will be a, a bundle, basically, order of separate items, and all the remaining amounts will be gathered together, or do not create any balance order, in which case, for instance, if you do rentals, uh, apartment rentals, holiday, home rentals, online they put down a deposit maybe 100 out of 300 for the week and they give you cash when they get on site so you don't need to create any balance order in that case so that's that and uh, now we have all the labels so this is basically uh, to explain what that is on the front end so deposit pay deposit pay full amount uh, partially paid uh, full priced label and balance label so this this is basically uh, just a uh, uh, so your visitors will understand what it is. And then we have deposit expiration here. As you can see, if you enable this, uh, what does it do? If you check these options, uh, if you want to set a number of days after which order with deposits cannot be completed anymore. So let's say you're selling a set of uh, chairs with a table, $500. Uh, someone put down a deposit of 100 and you want to set a limit uh, a limit of time uh, for which they can come and collect it in your showroom because you want to free up space you have only one item in your showroom so you want to say uh, has to be collected within 10 days after which they lose the deposit basically you know so if you take this and you can see here deposit expires so after some days from its creation so let's say 10 days or on a specific date or you can say uh, maybe uh, by end of the month in this instance you know but before the 30th of january or something like that so if it's after some days and then you can say 10 days here or 12 or 14 whichever you want even 30 days and that's basically how you set this up here and then we have all our email options here so uh, customer deposit created so do you want to send an email to your customers when an order with deposit was created uh, and the same for the admin and for the deposit if, if it's expired. You know, you want to let them know, of course. And once you're done, as always, don't forget to save. And then we have another tab here that says deposits. And this is where you can set up uh, any rules you want uh, related to deposits and down payments. So let me show you one example now. And these rules can be itemized by product. For instance, this one here, Yeath Cushion. So I went ahead and opened this, and so this is our page. And as you can see, you can uh, set a full amount of uh, $35 or a pair deposit. So now let's go and change this here. And we decide to have a full amount, but we're going to 
uh, set a specific rule just for this item on its own and instead of 250 uh, let's say we're gonna say it's at least ten dollars we need ten dollars for this one or even thirteen dollars let's say thirteen dollars update leaving a balance of 20 and now if we refresh in our front end you can see it's been reflected here uh, our deposit now is 13 and that's basically it if we add to cart so if we check our cart now as you can see i think i added it twice well, let me remove it once okay so that's it basically you know so it's 35 the balance will be 22 dollars because the price we're going to pay now what we're going to pay now is the deposit which is 13 dollars uh, out of 35 so that's it that's how you actually set up rules for products and these rules can be set up and configured based on user role or uh, based on product uh, different products or even by category so let's say you're running a sale this weekend uh, on all your tables let's say or just chairs you could just have all the chairs and then you can uh, request maybe a 50 percent deposit on all these chairs to secure the sale so this is how you do it and then finally let me show you here the different layouts so we have product with forced uh, deposit so forced deposit, you have no other choices. You go straight to uh, uh, paying a deposit. Variable product with deposit. So variable product is a, a product that has different options. So it could be different sizes, different colors. So as you can see, it could be blue, green, or gray. So let's say I click on the gray. And you can pay a deposit on uh, the green one. Sorry, on the green one, on the blue one. The blue one doesn't have the option, but the green one does have the option to pay deposit and then we have product with fixed deposit so here you can select i pay deposit or i pay the full price and then we have a category category sorry with custom rate so here uh, you can pay deposit so this is by categories you see the woman categories this is the one we had here in our rules woman so all these you have all these product pro, uh, product under the woman category will have the option to pay a deposit and finally let me show you the orders here so we have order with deposits so this is what the order would look like so you can see we have a total of four dollar fifty out of 65 and this is the confirmation email, you know, just to say that you paid a uh, 450 out of 65. And this is the description of your products, basically, you know. And then if you wanted to pay the balance, you can pay it immediately from here. So click on this and then you can go ahead and pay the full um, the remain the remainder basically. Then we have order with expired deposit. So as you see, we can uh, set up uh, 10 days, maximum 10 days, has to be collected within 10 days and so on. So this one here would be uh, what it looks like if you ran out of time and didn't come to collect. So the status is then cancelled. So again, back to our uh, product description here. As you can see, it mentions here that you will offer a positive service to customers who can't pay the whole amount beforehand avoiding to lose their orders so it's a very nice service you will provide to your customers indeed and at the same time you will generate more sales and secure more sales thanks to this plugin so all in uh, it's a very nice uh, piece of marketing indeed so there you go guys that's all for today as you can see it's a very nice plugin that can greatly increase your sales so let's look at our pros and cons for this plugin so for the pros i would say that it's very easy to configure you don't need a degree to understand how, it, how to use it and even from your customer's point of view it's very clear what you have to offer and it's a very appealing feature uh, to be honest now for the cons uh, there's only one uh, as mentioned at the outset i found it a little pricey at one in 1999 but again if you secure your first sale thanks to this plugin it'll be worth it indeed so all together i'm going to give this plugin an 8 out of 10 for its simplicity of use and for being such a powerful marketing tool 
as well. So there you go, guys. That's all for today. I hope you found this helpful. If so, please consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss a single update. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.